Great. Well, I wanted to take this opportunity not just to explore those few verses from John chapter 6 a little bit more fully than we had time to in the service itself, um, but also to think a little bit more generally about um, communion and particularly some of the questions that might have arisen for you in terms of the fact that we're in lockdown and as a church we're not able to gather, we're not able to break bread and share wine together. And how are we supposed to make sense of that? Well, I've got some thoughts on that uh, in the, a couple of videos time. But let's just reflect a little bit more on John chapter uh, 6 because I want you to see again the way in which Jesus is using this very physical um, language and imagery, talking about his flesh and, and his blood, but he's using them to speak to and to convey kind of unseen spiritual realities. Now we've seen this a few times in John's gospel. Remember he, the wine and the wedding at Canaan, the way in which that was speaking so very powerfully and so very clearly about his own blood that would be shed in, in the cross. Uh, think about the water uh, in John chapter 4 that Jesus was speaking about, that he was conveying something about the life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And, and here again in John chapter 6, the physical flesh and blood of Jesus um, is, is speaking to us, and I think it's actually, in G taking Jesus' words very seriously, is actually will convey to us the spiritual food that we need to sustain within us the divine life of God by His Holy Spirit. Now, you might remember a few weeks ago when we were looking at that passage where Jesus walks on the water. When I was preaching on that, I was talking about the way in which all of creation is designed to function like this. The whole of creation, every aspect of it, is designed the way it is. It works the way it does. It looks the way it does. It, it functions the way it does so that it can actually convey to us and point beyond itself to the spiritual realities of the unseen aspects of creation. You know, the, the whole the whole of creation, you've got to understand this, this is such a deeply Christian way of thinking about the world we live in. The whole of the seen creation is this massively immersive, multi-sensory sermon that's assaulting us all the time, declaring to us the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. If only we had eyes to see and ears to hear. But we, we get a hint of it here, don't we, in John chapter 6. Uh, have a look again at John 6, 55, where, where Jesus is talking about how his, how his flesh and his blood are real food and drink. Interesting that, isn't it? That this spiritual dynamic, that, that's of feeding on Christ, that, that is real food. That's real drink. And, and, and actually the stuff that we usually think about as food and drink, you know, the, the physical stuff that we eat, actually, that's, that's not real food. You know, the physical food sustains our physical life. But that's not an end in itself, is it? Because every time we sit down to enjoy a meal, uh, what we're actually being confronted with is something that is teaching us about our intrinsic dependence on Christ to sustain our life. If we stop eating and drinking, eventually we, we die. We need it. We need food and drink in, in order to live. And every time we eat, we're being taught about our critical and indispensable need of Christ if we are going to sustain by the Spirit the divine life of God within us. Just a couple of verses later in verse 58, uh, Jesus shows us how this particularly comes into focus in a very specific example of food, um, the manna in the, in the wilderness. You know, food that was, was in a very direct way being given from heaven. In Psalm 78, uh, Asaph tells us that the manna was actually, it was actually the bread of angels. I mean, it was literally food from heaven. There was nothing, nothing comparable to it in anything that the world had experienced before. Now, is it any wonder that when Israel went out and saw it for the first time, the question was, you know, what is this? What is this? Because that's what manna means, right? What, what is this? And yet the manna was there all the time, every day. 
every day, except obviously on the, on the, the Sabbath. Um, but the Lord provided it and continued to provide it throughout the entirety of the church's pilgrimage through the wilderness. Uh, and it wasn't until they actually got into the promised land that the manna ceased. But even the manna, even the bread of angels from heaven as it was, even the manna couldn't actually sustain the eternal life of the living God. And that's Jesus' point, isn't it? Um, they, they ate, your ancestors, they ate the manna. They ate this bread from heaven. And yet what happened? Still, they, they died. Um, now, Jesus is, is taking that, that dynamic of the manna, though, and he's saying, yeah, but that, that, was, that was an enacted parable. It was a shadow pointing to, to me. I gave it to you so that you could learn about me. I, I am the real food. And my death, and only my death, is able to sustain within you the eternal life, the divine life of God. See, the whole thing is teaching us that Jesus is the bread from heaven. And, and that we need him. He's not an optional extra. Without him, there is, really, there is no, no life at all. You know, the Bible talks, doesn't it, about what an impoverished experience of life we have outside of Christ. That actually, just because our heart is beating, doesn't mean we have life. We can still be actually dead in our sin, dead in our transgressions. And we need Christ to actually bring into our experience the kind of life that we were, in, in fact, created for. And that, that life has to break in from outside of our experience of this cursed world with its superficial and impoverished ideas of what life might be about. It's quite sobering, isn't it, that if he hadn't come from heaven, then we would have no point of contact, no access to the divine life of God. Strange, isn't it, the way in which we tend to think of this seen part of creation. This, this physical, what we call the physical world that we can see and touch and, and taste and, and hear. We tend to think of that as the real world. And the spiritual world, somehow that's, that's vague and, and insubstantial and we can't really get a hold of that. And we can't really know what that's actually like. Strange though, isn't it, that Jesus sees it in exactly the opposite way. That, that actually the, the spiritual world. That's the real world. Spiritual life is real life. Christ himself is real food. And it's actually this physical world that is the shadow, if you like. The, the, the insubstantial part of creation, at least in its fallen state. So, you see Jesus here offering himself as the real Food, the real drink. The shadowy stuff that we usually think of as food and drink, that, that sustains our physical life. And for it, we should be thankful and we should eat and drink to the glory of God. But if we want spiritual life, and if we want to sustain that spiritual life by the Spirit, then we need something more than physical food. We need real food, spiritual food, the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Only there can we find life and life in all its fullness. And we'll see how that works out in the liturgy of our church in the next video.